Moving an injured person in the wilderness is not an easy or fast task. Knowing how to build a stretcher that will help carry a patient further and more efficiently is an extremely useful skill. Improvised stretchers can be difficult to make without prior knowledge or practice. And there are many different ways of making one. Today, we will test and review and show you how to make four different types of stretchers in the wilderness. Let's start with duct tape. With two poles or branches, make four horizontal duct tape straps. The sticky side of the tape should be stuck together for stronger straps. Create diagonal straps between each horizontal strap. The time to make this stretcher was not long, but it's not short either. It's also a bit more complicated than it appears. Dirt and leaves kept sticking to the tape, decreasing its strength. We found that creating shorter pieces were much easier to work with. The strength of the stretcher really surprised us. When done right, it seems very strong and durable, but it does use a lot of duct tape. Fully zip and invert the sleeves of at least two jackets. More may be used. Thread poles or branches through the sleeves. Overall, this jacket stretcher did not take too long to make. It is not complicated and is good in strength and durability, especially if cross supports are added. But we think more than two jackets are needed to make this a good stretcher. And using your jackets means they are not available to you or the patient to stay warm. Remember, the cold makes a shock or trauma patient worse. Find the middle of the rope. Lay down a zigzag pattern that is one foot wider and one foot longer than your patient's width and height. Attach the rope ends along each loop using clove hitches. Thread any remaining rope through the loops. Poles or branches may be threaded through the loops for extra stability. The rope litter often gets a lot of hype because it looks really cool, but wow. <laughs> It does take a lot of time to make and is rather complicated for someone not familiar with rope or knots. The durability is good, but the effectiveness of this stretcher is poor. Without other support, it's just too flexible and makes it difficult to efficiently carry a person. But if it's all you have, then you must do. Overall, we do not recommend this stretcher if other options are available. Lay the tarp flat. Place a pole or branch at the one-third position. Fold this one-third section over the pole. Place the other pole on top. Fold the remaining one-third over this pole. The weight of your patient should hold the tarp in place. This was the fastest of all the stretchers to make and by far the least complicated. We were also surprised with its strength and effectiveness, although we did not test it over a long distance. We love how minimal this stretcher is. Definitely a favorite. So there you go, four reviews of different stretchers you can make today. But remember, practice before an emergency happens. This is key. We suggest making a dummy out of clothes like we did so that no one accidentally gets hurt during the first go. To learn more about outdoor safety and wilderness first aid, be sure to check out our online courses at www.base-medical.com. Stay safe.